Hi there! Zener diodes are used for several purposes, from providing a reference voltage to protect the sensitive circuits from being destroyed by the wrong input. Today, I will show you how these diodes work and how to build a simple circuit to measure their most important characteristics, the reverse breakdown voltage. Let's begin! A Zener diode is available in different kinds of containers. The smaller one are usually in glass containers like this one. More powerful Zeners are available in epoxy containers and also metal containers. A Zener diode is like a regular diode, but there is one major difference. When a direct polarization voltage is applied like this, so the positive of the power supply goes to the anode, and then to the cathode, the resistor, back to the negative power supply. So, the Zener diode in this case behaves exactly like a regular diode and conduces current that is only limited by the resistor that it is put in series with it. When an inverse polarization is applied, so this time we give the negative on the anode and the positive to the resistor to the cathode, the Zener will not let the current flow as long as the voltage here is low. But when the voltage starts increasing, as soon as we cross the boundary that is called the reverse breakdown voltage of the Zener diode, then the diode starts conducting and the only way to basically limit the current across the diode is again to put the resistor in series of it. When this configuration is achieved with the diode conducting an inverse polarization, the voltage across the diode will basically equal the reverse breakdown voltage. This property makes the Zener diode device capable of providing a constant reference voltage, and as with the regular diodes, the Zener diode is available in different powers. We have Zener diode of 0 0.25 watts, or 4 quarter watt, half watt or 0 0.5 watts, 1 watt, and so forth. In any case, the dissipated power equals always to the product of the reverse breakdown voltage times the current flowing through the diode. If we look at the characteristic of the Zener diode, voltage and current, we see that the, the right side here, the, where there is the forward bias, the diode behaves like a regular diode, but when we move to the region of the inverse bias, we see that the diode does not conduct any current until we reach the reverse breakdown voltage. At that point, the diode quickly starts conducting electricity. There is this region here, in addition to that, where you see that when you change the voltage a little bit, the current change drastically. But once the voltage reaches this point here, then all the current that is possible to get through will get through. If we have a Zener diode and we don't know its uh, value of the reverse breakdown voltage, for example because it's not written well on the body of the, of the diode itself, we can use a current generator providing just about uh, 10 to 20 mA to inversely polarize the diode in this region. And then, with a voltmeter, a digital one possibly, so with a high impedance, we can measure the voltage across the diode and see what is in the reverse breakdown voltage. Let's now see how to build such a device. To start, let's take a look at a schematic. The first thing on the left is the battery, which is a 9 volt battery, which is used to power up the whole circuit. However, since we want to measure breakdown voltages that are higher than 9 volts, we need to increase the voltage of the battery using a boost converter, which will bring the voltage of the battery to about 30-35 volts. So between these two points, plus and minus on the output of the converter, we will have this voltage much higher than the one of the battery. We will use this voltage, first of all, to power up our current generator, which is made up of the Zener diode D1, resistors R1 and R2, 
and the transistor, which is a 2M3906. The voltage on the base of the transistor is kept stable by the Zener D1, so basically the voltage on the emitter of the transistor will be the same as the base decreased by the VBE of the transistor itself. So on the emitter of the transistor we will have a constant voltage. A constant voltage across the resistor R1 generates a constant current, which will go through the collector of the transistor. And this is the place where we are going to put our Zener under test, with the cathode on the plus and the anode on the minus, so we can inversely polarize it and see how much is the breakdown voltage. In parallel to the Zener under test, we put a voltmeter, a digital voltmeter, uh, which is basically is powered up uh, through the ground over here and through this red wire over here directly with the 9 volts battery. And then the yellow wire coming out from it is used to measure actually the voltage on the cathode of the Zener. So basically the voltmeter will provide us with the breakdown voltage of the Zener diode. This S1 is a push button, really. So basically it will be closed only when we are ready to measure the Zener voltage and once we're done with it we just lift it and the circuit will be powered down. And here is the box I designed to host the circuit that I, we are going to build in a few minutes. As you can see, well this is the top of the box where the push button will be positioned. Then this is the hole for uh, the voltmeter and the two holes for uh, the connectors where the Zener can be attached to. This receptacle over here it was going to be used to hold in place the 9 volt battery, while the circuit itself will be put in between this place here and this place here on the other side. And this is basically the cover of the box that will be going to be, it's going to be on the bottom. So this is how the box will actually look like. There is uh, some information here in terms of uh, the code that I wrote to prepare this box. Of course, you can take a look at it, and I will put a link to the place where you can download it if you want to, so you can reproduce the box yourself and build a similar circuit eventually. For that, look at the information in the, on the bottom on the description of this video. In order to assemble the circuit, I started cutting the wires to connect the boost converter, and then I prepared the ends of the wires by removing some insulation and putting some solder on the bare wire. Then I soldered the wires to the boost converter. Next, I prepared the wires for the push button with the same procedure I used for the wires connected to the boost converter. Once that was done, I soldered them to the connectors on the push button. Once the wires were attached to the push button, I proceeded to mount the push button itself to the box on the top of it. I then took a small piece of perf board that could fit on the inside of the box and soldered to it the wires coming from the push button. In series with these wires, I connected the wires coming from the battery connector, making sure the push button was attached on the positive side of the battery according with the schematic. Next was the turn of the input wires of the boost converter that go between ground, which is the negative of the battery, and the positive of the power supply right after the push button. At this point, before moving on with the assembly of the circuit, I connected the battery to the battery connector and measured the voltage at the output of the boost converter with a voltmeter. Then I adjusted the value of the output to the maximum voltage, so that the device will be able to test a wide range of Zener diodes. In particular, with the boost converter I had available, I was able to have an output of about 31 volts, good enough to measure breakdown voltages of about 29-30 volts. 
Once that was done, I removed the voltmeter and the battery, and I continued to assemble the device by connecting to the perf board the output wires of the boost converter. These wires are those that power the current generator that provides the current to test the Zener diodes. Note that the negative of the boost converter output is connected to ground, which is the same potential to which the negative of the boost converter input is connected. Now that the boost converter had been connected, it was time to assemble the current generator. First, I connected the resistor R2 and the Zener diode D1 in series, and then to the terminals of the boost converter output, making sure that the Zener was on the side of the positive terminal and that it was oriented correctly, with the cathode toward the positive terminal and the anode toward the resistor. Next, I soldered the transistor on the breadboard. And then I connected the resistor R1 between the emitter of the transistor and the positive output of the boost converter. Once that was done, I prepared a couple of wires to be connected to the collector of the transistor and to ground, to attach the test connectors to the circuit. At this point, it was time for some more mechanical assembly. First, I took care of positioning the digital voltmeter in its slot inside the box. Then, I prepared the test connectors by soldering the cables to them and then putting them in their holes on the front panel of the device. Let me tell you, it wasn't easy to put the nuts on the inside of the panel because of the small space and my big hands. Once the test connectors were in place, I finally soldered the voltmeter cables, connecting the voltmeter negative power cable to ground and the positive to the push button on the side of the positive input of the boost converter. And last, I connected the yellow cable of the voltmeter, the one used to make measurements, to the positive test connector. Lastly, I put the boost converter and the perf board in the slots inside the box, connected the battery and put that two in the box. Now I was ready to do some real testing. Testing the complete device was very easy to do. I just took some Zener diodes of known breakdown voltage, connected them one at a time to the device and verify that it was providing the correct value of the voltage. Once I found that the test was successful, the only things left to do were to close the box with a couple of screws and attach some bumpers to the box. Done. I'm sure this little device to measure the breakdown voltage of Zener diodes will be a useful addition to your workbench, and I hope you enjoyed this video where I described how I designed and built mine. If you liked it, please don't forget to give me a thumb up, it will help me to understand what kind of videos you would like to see. Also, if you want to be informed when a new video comes out on my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon. Also, if you like my channel and would like to see many more videos, please consider to become a patron by going to my patreon.com page and pledging a small monthly amount of money.
even a single dollar helps. Or you can go with a single donation every now and then through my PayPal account. All the information to do so is in the video description below. Thank you for watching and as usual, happy experiments!